Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 20th episode of WeeklyPokerHand.com. Today I'm going to be going over a hand I played at 5 cent, 10 cent, no limit. And this was actually a hand from the Bankroll Builder series that I've been doing for about 90 weeks now. Uh, you can check it out at BankrollBuilderSeries.com. Uh, basically I started with $300 and I've been grinding it up slowly but surely. It's been a a tough road with lots of variants, but we are currently profiting a decent amount of buy-in, so that's always nice. Hopefully it keeps up. Uh, but yeah, you can check that out at bankrollbuilderseries.com if you do play small stakes games and want to see how I play them. So in this hand, the player on the button raises, you can see he has pretty normal statistics. If you don't know about these numbers, I do discuss them in the Bankroll Builder series. Basically, the Let's take a look at uh, Buck Seeker here. The first number, 25, that is the amount of hands he's playing, his voluntarily put dollar in pot. The second number is, pre is his preflop raise. Third number is his steal percentage. Fourth number is his aggression frequency, which means how often he's betting when he can, or taking the aggressive action when he can. And the fifth number is the number of hands. On the next row, we have three bet percentage, fold to three bet percentage, four bet percentage, and fold to four bet percentage. And uh, all the other numbers aren't really going to matter because uh, we don't have quite enough hands on the players. So anyways, Buck Seeker's playing pretty aggressively. He opens, and then this player here, let's check out his name, Ready for All elects to 3-bet. But if you look at his numbers, he is 3-betting a ton. 50% is through the roof. I mean, like if you look at my number, 12%, that's usually the highest at the table. And, I mean... 50% is absurd. Obviously, we only have 20 hands on him, so the number's probably not quite accurate, but that being said, I really do not want to 4-bet with the aces here, because if I re-raise to, like, 270, he's going to fold out all of his garbage, and that is the exact opposite of what I want to happen here. So right here, I think calling is by far the best play, and, you know, you will end up getting outdrawn sometimes, but it's more than worth the risk just to be able to play a very large pot against a player that's overly aggressive. So the flop comes 7-4-4, and this is a spot where I think a lot of players in my seat would just go all in, but I think that is a huge error. More likely than not, both players are drawing near dead against us. I mean, the only thing we're really concerned with is if they have, like, 7-8, in which case they have two outs. If they have pocket fives, they have two outs. So, I mean, really they're drawing near dead with pretty much their whole range. And if they do have a four, we're getting all the money in anyways, and I'm just going to lose. So right here, I think raising serves little to no purpose. So I think calling is clearly the best play. If I raise here and my opponent is bluffing, the guy at 250 here, he's just going to fold out all of his air. So by shoving here, you, for you don't allow your opponent to continue bluffing, which is not what you want to do against an aggressive opponent. So I like to call. Turns a 9, which is, again, pretty much a blank. And the cool part about this board is that basically every turn card is going to be a blank, which doesn't happen too often, but whenever the board comes a, a card and too low, a, too, a low pair a lot of the turns are going to be bricks for aces. I mean, the only I guess the only bad card on the turn would be a 7, and even then it's not that bad, because it's pretty unlikely our opponent has a 7. Uh, he checks. Notice he has a little bit less than a pot size bet behind. I think right here, we only have one option, and before I say it, take a second and try to figure it out. Okay, it is to check. And the reason I like checking here is because notes that our opponent has a pot size, a less, less than a pot size bet left, which means on the river if he bets, it's going to be a pretty large bet, like at least 3 or $4, and probably an all-in. And at this point, I really don't think he has anything. I want him to catch up at this point, and most likely if he catches up to anything, it's going to be behind me anyways. It's like if he's sitting here with Queen Jack, if he catches a queen, he'll probably think it's good and go all-in. But if I bet here, he's just going to fold everything. I think right here, even a small bet would be a, a pretty big mistake, because you really do not want to force your opponent off their bluffs. And when a guy's 3-betting 50% of the time, his whole range is bluffs. So betting here serves no purpose again. River's a 5, and my opponent does go all in. And at this point, some players get scared and think, well, he must have got there with pocket 5s, or with 8-6, or whatever. But you got to realize that you don't really lose to anything here besides pocket 5s, and pocket 9s, and pocket 7s, and 5-4. <laughs> so... Uh, I think this is an extraordinarily easy call on the river. This is exactly what we want to happen. We induced a bluff by checking back the turn. And whenever you induce a bluff, you should not be looking to get away from your hand. So we do call. And I'm actually going to save 
uh, save it until the next episode where, or not the next episode, until the next part of this episode where I talk about my opponent's play to show you what he had. But regardless of what happens here, I do think this is a very easy call, and I think it's going to be extraordinarily profitable. Um, and let me know if you guys like me saving the, the results till part two, because, you know, you need to have a little bit of surprise in your life, and you always need to think about ranges, and don't really worry about results. I know a lot of players worry about whether or not or they try to figure out who won the hand. Like, say we get it all in with jacks against ace-king, that's the end of the hand. You know, it doesn't really matter who wins. Right here, it doesn't really matter who wins. All we have to do is make sure that we're making profitable decisions. So, let me know what you think. And if you're interested in uh, small state cash game videos, I, I have tons of them, like probably 90 hours worth at bankrollbuilderseries.com. So, check that out. This has been Jonathan Little for weeklypokerhand.com. Thanks for watching.